What's up, everybody? I'm Karima, a.k.a. The Blurred Girl. How you guys doing today? You guys can do it better than that. Come on. All right, there you go. I am now talking to the creators of Lion Force. Now, there's more of them than three, I promise you. But today, I have um, right here David F. Walker. I think some of you know who he is. Ezra Clayton Daniels. And Mr. Rodney Barnes, how are you? Welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you did that like you've done this before. Well, yes, I have. <laughs> so, I want to talk to you first about Lion Forge a little bit. Now, everybody, a lot of people have heard about Catalyst Prime over the past few years, and a lot of people have heard about Lion Forge, but not a lot of people know where it came from, what do you, you know, and that it's really an, in a growing indie comics company that's a force. Um, it was founded in 2011 by David Stewart II and Carl Reed, and each of you now have a comic or multiple comics with this publishing company. So David, I want to start with you since you're closest. Okay. Now. What do you want to know? <laughs> what can I well, tell you? Well, I know you've worked for a bunch of, you've done comics for years. I mean, yes. Marvel's Power Man and Iron Fist. Y'all remember that one, right? Luke Cyborg, Cage. Cyborg, maybe yeah. Luke Cage. Exactly. So what made you jump to Lion Forge and work on a comic like Superb? Well, um, I, I knew about Lion Forge. I knew some of the work they were doing. Uh, I'd been contacted. They were, they were starting the Catalyst Prime universe. They approached me about co-writing a book and my plate was pretty full, but they told me at the time that uh, one of the lead characters in the book that I would be writing uh, has Down syndrome. It would be a superhero with Down syndrome. And, and so I said yes, because th not only uh, the challenge of that as a writer was, was very daunting and intimidating to me, but in terms of um, representation, I, I, I felt like if somebody wrote a book with a character with Down syndrome and they messed it up, I'd rather it be me messing it up by doing the best job I could possibly do than somebody who just wouldn't put any humanity into that character, which is a thing a lot of writers do is they just, if they're writing outside of their, um, however they identify, they will, they just try to take an easy way out and, and, and write in terms of stereotypes and tropes, which I didn't want to see. Well, for the record, he didn't mess it up. <laughs> um, now, and that comic is called Superb. Superb, yes. And uh, I think issue 13 or 14 just came out. So I lose track of that stuff. And you've, and you've worked with a lot of artists. I mean, I know Alita Martinez yes. worked with you. Um, I know Sheena Howard at one point was co-writing. Yeah, Sheena, Sheena Howard was co-writing. Um, Alita Martinez is now the, the current artist, Ray Haight, Eric Battle. Work with both of them, so it's been some some pretty amazing some really, talent. Yeah, yeah, some really talented people. Okay, yes. that's amazing. Now, Ezra, your book, Up, Upgrade Soul. Now, if any of y'all read my column on Sci-Fi Wire in the Comic Spotlight, shameless plug, I I have reviewed his comic very recently, and it's very very good. But can you give everybody a premise of what Upgrade Soul is about? Sure, yeah. Upgrade Soul is a story about an aging couple that go through an experimental rejuvenation procedure, and they're inadvertently clones, and their clones are severely disfigured, but intellectually and physically vastly superior. So the whole story is kind of a, it's a, it's about which is a truer vessel for the individual's identity. Sorry, it's going to go a little bit deep. But, <laughs> but basically the idea is like, is the person the one that looks like the person we recognize or the one that by all statistical measures is a superior uh, vessel for that identity? So it's all about like, it, it's really about the way the world um, enforces um, limitations upon us by the way we look. So, so the clones, though they're disfigured, are superior in every way. So theoretically, they should be able to live a much better life. But because they don't look um, palatable, uh, they'll be limited in everything they do. Right, so it's the ethics involved as well, too. There's a lot of stuff involved. I worked on this book for 15 years. It just came out last week. Um, so over the course of 15 years working on this book, I slathered it with layer upon layer upon layer of stuff. So it's a very dense uh, book. And, and a, we should it's also... It's a great book. It's Everybody an amazing book. buy it. Yeah. It's amazing. It really... Yeah, and we're it. not just saying it because we're up here. I, it's a really good book. And it also won the 2017 Wayne McDuffie Award. So that's, a, that's something, for those of you who don't know. Now, one of the themes in the book is 
I, I think one of the things I like about the book is that it normalizes things that I think mainstream many times just highlights, like, look, we have this, we have that. But it's sort of an elderly African-American man and a Latina woman who's his wife, and they're both scientists and, and geeks, basically. And it tells their love story in a very interesting way. Did you get any pushback from that when you were trying to pitch it and present it? Well, I, you know, like I said, I worked on the book for 15 years, and I pitched it around uh, sporadically while I was working on it. And the pushback may be that nobody wanted to publish it. <laughs> and, and so I think that's why it's, it was really um, serendipitous that Lion Forge kind of came up at the same time that I finished the book, because Lion Forge is just like organically the most perfect place for a book like this. But just because diversity is at like such the core of the book, and diversity is at such the core of Lion Forge as their mission. It is, it is, it really is. Now, um, we're gonna get to the gentleman on the end here. <laughs> now, you're up here to talk about your comic, actually, but I, I just want everybody to realize that Rodney Barnes is also an executive producer and writer um, on American Gods. And so, um, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are y'all okay? What is going on? Yeah, we're good. I mean, okay. I think um, anytime you have a show with as big a budget, layered storytelling, um, just the amount of talent that we have, it's not a straight line. You're going to have ups and downs, but I think where we land is a really safe place and a place where the fans will end up really happy with what they see. We really build nicely off of season one. So okay, good. I think you should be looking forward to so it. So the kids are all right. <laughs> yeah, the kids are good. The kids are safe. They were in danger for a minute, but they're back. They're okay. They made it out of the water. <laughs> now, back to Lion Forge. You have a comic coming out called Queen Credible. Yes. Now, you're going to have to tell me something about this book. Let us uh, tell everybody about it. Quinn Credible is about a kid who has one superpower. He's indestructible. And 12 years old, and he's in a place where he's still developing insecure, a lot of emotional self-esteem stuff, and he doesn't see his power as actually being a power, and he has to develop himself emotionally in order to be able to see the gift that he has as a person and as a hero. And so really overcoming himself, like I think is the journey we all kind of wrestle with, is his path. And the stronger his self-esteem becomes, the stronger uh, he more identifies as being a hero. So yeah. Okay, and does, does he get that far in the first issue? <laughs> no, it takes okay. a while. It I'm takes a joking. while for him to get there. <laughs> it gets a while for him. It takes a minute for him to accept that this thing is truly a gift. And it takes other heroes uh, in our universe to be able to sort of point it out, but he's got to get it from within. It's an intrinsic thing. And it's almost like the message of people can tell you you can do anything, but at a certain point you have to accept that idea yourself. Yes. And it's sort of, uh, as a father, it's uh, sort of speaking to my kids about seeing self-worth and being able to identify with your sense of purpose and your path in life. That's wonderful. Now, I have to ask you the same question. You have a big, a long history in TV, like Boondocks, and I, I obviously mentioned American Gods, but you've done a ton of other TV. Why comics? Why Lion Forge? Uh, Lion Forge, if you look at my career in television, uh, I started in network TV. Uh, my wife and kids, everybody hates Chris, and there are boundaries that you have to write in between. You have to stick to a certain, you can't go outside of the margins. And then when I did the boondocks, we could say... Yeah, y'all drew outside the line a little bit. Wanted. Just a little and, bit. And so Lion Forge is certainly sort of along the same path. I've done a couple of books for Marvel, and that's been a great experience. But being able to speak directly to the culture in a very specific, nuanced way um, was something that's exciting. Now, real quick from, from each of you, quick, David. Yes. <laughs> um, what is, where are we now? There's a lot of conversations about diversity and what, where we are and what we're doing. But I mean, is it that bad? Like, I, comics are selling. And, it's, and Black Panther proves that comic book characters of color and comic book characters sell. 
Yeah, I, I just think we're uh, just on the next phase of, the, of our journey, especially within this industry. It's, it's what was once marginalized is now being mainstream in terms of the product, but now the people who have been marginalized are entering into the mainstream, and that's freaking a lot of people out. And they just need to realize that everybody deserves to see themselves represented in, in a positive and heroic manner, something that can activate the dreams and imaginations of young people, because ultimately, this ain't about for middle-aged folks. You know what I'm saying? We should be trying to inspire young people. And so when a 45-year-old person is, is upset because of something that they don't get, that's their problem as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Ezra, what do you think? Yeah, I would, I would say that I, I look forward to the, to the time when diversity is, like you were saying earlier, just like, like normalized. Like yeah. di because diversity is reality. It's, I, I call it Brooklyn. Right, exactly. But diverse, like there's diverse populations in every nook and cranny of the world. Like I'm from Sioux City, Iowa, and there's diversity in Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, and so if you're writing stories that don't reflect that, I think it's intentional. And I think that people need to be called out more for that. Great. Real quick, what's your, what's your take on it? Uh, you know, uh, to what was said earlier, I mean, there's a pre-civil rights sort of thinking and there's a post-civil rights sort of thinking. And I think there's something beautiful about creators of color being able to make really specific choices in how the characters actualize themselves uh, in comics and in every other medium. And I think that I, bothers some people. Yeah. It does. I just want to thank you. I'm sorry we were out of time. Please stick around for Jeff Ruvie on combining music and comics and gunning for hats. Thank you all so thank much. You so thank much. you. Thank all of you. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Jackie Jennings with Sci-Fi Wire. If you can't get enough of New York Comic Con, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for news, interviews, cosplay, and so much more. What are you waiting for?